Being a royal is a full-time job. Apparently, it's a job that makes a lot of money. Ever wonder how the royal family stays so rich? The ways are more unusual than you think. Before we enter the royal treasury, make sure you're subscribed to The Taco and give this video a like. Now, let's get started. Privy Purse in 2017, the Queen's income was $26 million. How and where did the Queen get all of this money? Her private income is known as the Privy Purse. The Privy Purse is a portfolio that contains 45,600 acres of land, but most of the income is from an estate called the Duchy of Lancaster. Part of the estate are urban developments, agricultural dealings, and historic buildings. The Queen's total assets are now worth more than half a billion pounds. While the income may be the Queen's, the Privy Purse also supports other members of the royal family. Sovereign Grant Though the Queen and the Prince of Wales have their own private income, the taxpayers aren't off scot-free. Another way the Queen makes money is by receiving a sovereign grant. The grant comes from a treasury funded by taxpayers. In 2015, the Queen's sovereign grant was £40.1 million, or about $49 million. That was 15% of the Crown Estate's profit. What is a sovereign grant for? It covers costs for palace upkeep, employee payroll, and travel expenses. Inheritance the Queen is also making money thanks to her late father. She inherited the Sandringham Estate free and clear. The Sandringham Estate is a castle the Queen often retreats to in the countryside. The estate is worth about $65 million. The Queen also inherited the Balmoral Castle in Aberdeenshire, Scotland. This castle in the Scottish Highlands is worth $140 million. Because she inherited the properties from her father, Sandringham and Balmoral are her own and not part of the Crown Estate. Art Collections History, art, and culture are all valuable to a royal. That's why when it comes to art collections, the Queen can't be beat. It is said that the Royal Art Collection is the largest privately owned collection in the world. It contains over a million objects ranging from ceramics and cards to photographs and manuscripts. Part of it are the Queen's crown jewels, as well as works by Rembrandt, Da Vinci, and Michelangelo. The market value of the entire collection is at 10 billion pounds. Prince Philip the Queen may be the head of the royal family, but that doesn't mean Prince Philip completely depends on her. He also receives money that is separate from the Queen's. According to the Sovereign Grant Act, Prince Philip received an annual parliamentary annuity of £359,000. This was to cover expenses of carrying his out of his public duties in support of the Queen. Prince Philip was mostly in charge of giving speeches and attending events with or without the Queen. He even joked in 2016 that he was the world's most expensive plague unveiler. Prince Philip has now retired from his duties, but his net worth is still at around $30 million. Prince William's Job Despite already being a royal with millions to his name, Prince William still earns on his own. He's the first royal ever to hold a civilian contract. He's a pilot for the East Anglian Air Ambulance. Prince William pilots an air ambulance helicopter and flies to injured or ill civilians in remote parts of England. His earnings are about $62,000 a year. That may not be much compared to what he earns as a royal, but it's for a good cause. Not only does Prince William come to aid those in need, but most of his salary goes to his chosen charities. Wind one lucrative source of income for the royal family is the sustainable energy sector. The Crown Estate has a bunch of seabed properties. For the past six years, these have been leased out to offshore wind farms. The Crown Estate earned $31 million from the wind farm business dealings in 2016. The London Array, a 175 turbine operation, is the largest offshore wind farm in the world. It is currently leased by the Crown Estate. Princess Diana Princess Diana captivated the world with her charm and grace. The entire world was at a loss when she passed away in 1997, but she kept caring for her children even after her death by leaving them each a trust fund. Each son inherited $13 million, which they received on their 30th birthdays. Princes William and Harry were allowed to live off an investment income worth about $450,000 a year thanks to their late mother. They also inherited Princess Di's jewelry, dresses, and documents, but we'll say their coolest inheritance yet was the handwritten lyrics of Candle in the Wind by Elton John. The Army 
nowadays, Prince Harry focuses on working with charities and being a sweet prince to Meghan Markle. But before he retired in 2015, the charming prince was earning his own money. He joined the army. The prince had already inherited millions as a part of the royal family, but he never lost his drive for service. He joined the Blues and Royals in 2006 and served the army for 10 years. When he first started out as an officer, Prince Harry was earning about $45,251 every year. Upon finishing his training, he served as a helicopter pilot for the Army Air Corps. During this time, he was making around $52,000 annually. Horse Racing Queen Elizabeth has always loved horses and horse racing. She owns the Ascot Race Course in Berkshire. The profit she earned in 2016 from horse racing was $5.1 million. The Queen also breeds her own horses and owns some of England's finest thoroughbreds. Just by racing alone, her horses have raked in $9.4 million in the past 30 years. Another way the Queen earns is by offering stud services with her winning horses. One of her horses, Frankel, demands a whopping $200,000 fee just to be bred. Stocks. Being a royal isn't just boring dinners or quiet tea parties in the garden. The queen dabbles in the heart-racing business of stock investments. The queen has an investment portfolio consisting largely of shares in blue-chip British companies. As of 2015, the queen's shares were worth $14.89 million. While most of the queen's investments are successful, there are always risks involved. She reportedly invested $154,000 in a website called GetMapping.com. However, the following year, shares plummeted to $16,000. $1,000. The Duchy of Cornwall Prince Charles also gets a lot of his income from the Duchy of Cornwall, which is a whole suite of properties under the royal family. The Duchy of Cornwall supports the Prince of Wales as well as all of his heirs. That means expenses of Prince Harry, Meghan Markle, Prince William, Kate Middleton, and their children are covered by the Duchy of Cornwall. In 2016, their income was $40.8 million. Coastline Properties the royals make a lot of money from owning land and properties around England. From historical buildings to commercial developments, property is an important asset. It's a safe and steady way of supporting the lifestyles of the royal family. One of their assets is half of the coastline. Their estate includes all UK coastal waters within 12 miles of land, where energy companies are increasingly paying to construct wind farms. As part of the royal estate, the royal family owns three marinas, aquaculture facilities, ports and harbors. They earn money from marine research, seaweed cultivation, duck hunting, and leisure boating. Landlords The royal family owns so many places that they're the biggest landlords in Britain. Imagine calling one of the princes to fix the leak in your kitchen sink. 58% of the real estate they own is in central London. They primarily own Regent Street, one of the first planned developments in London. It is also where you can find the Crown Estate headquarters. They also own the high-end retail shops, homes, and half of all of the buildings in St. James. Dolphins The queen is definitely an animal lover. We're all witness to her love for her horses and her adorable corgis. Even the swans that wander in Hyde Park are property of the queen. But did you know that even dolphins are under her jurisdiction? Under UK law, any animal that swims in the River Thames is considered personal property of the monarch. That's right, besides the common fish, we're talking sturgeons, whales, and dolphins. This is a law that has been enacted since 1324. King Edward II made sure he owned everything as king, even the passing dolphins. Gold we're not just talking about the beautiful jewelry the royals don during special occasions. We're talking about all the gold in the UK. The Crown Estate owns virtually all of the naturally occurring gold and silver in the UK. Besides gold, their assets also include minerals such as limestone, coal, sandstone, gypsum, and slate. In 2013, around 2,500 people got notices that the royals have the right to dig in their property to look for minerals. Stamp Collecting don't shun the kid who's busy collecting stamps for being nerdy. If done right, it can be used to make sure wealth stays in your royal family. The queen has one of the most valuable stamp collections in the world. She received the royal philatelic collection through an inheritance from her father, who received it from his father. It's estimated to be at least well over 10 million pounds. Personal Fortune 
We know now that the entire royal family is supported by grants and private homes, but that doesn't mean that if the handouts disappear, the queen would be left for broke. Her personal fortune is estimated to be worth $414.7 million. Why doesn't the queen just retire then? She believes strongly that she is at the service of her people. After all, the royal family brings in nearly £1.8 billion to the UK economy. About £550 million of it are because of tourism to see them or their castles. Royal Duties can you imagine any royals clocking in and out for work? It's safe to say that royal duties aren't like any other job, but the royals are required to perform certain duties for which they get paid. If Prince William and Kate Middleton are present at an event for the Queen, they get paid for the task. But when Prince Philip was still an active royal, he had given almost 6,000 speeches. Prince Charles is the head of 13 charities, while Prince Harry and Meghan Markle also perform duties for charitable work. The Queen herself hasn't stopped the daily grind even at 91. From 2000, from 2016 to 2017, the Queen carried out 162 official engagements. Taxpayers it's been an ongoing debate on whether the UK should keep or click out the royal family. One of the more significant expenses of the royal family would be their travel costs. The taxpayers are responsible for funding the sovereign grant that covers the royal family expenses. In 2017, the royal spent over $5 million for official travel. They also spent $300,000 using the royal train system. But even the Queen racks up big bills, the royal treasury says not to worry. Each taxpayer pays only 65 pence every year about the cost of a first-class stamp. Was it as conventional as you thought, or was it out of the box? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.